Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and welcome to the how-to for Bewitchment, the diabolical update. Yay! Alright, uh, enough of that uh, silliness. Okay, yes, as you can see, all demonic and the like. I'm all demonic and scary. Very, very fun. Unfortunately, that uh, causes memory leaks and problems, so we're going to just turn that off right now. Because we don't need it. So this time, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Instead of, you know, just going and covering everything, because this is not a rewrite of the mod, it's uh, just the update, the Diabolic update, I'm only going to be covering the new things instead of everything, because that'd take way too long, you know? So this is just going to be uh, a much simpler one. So if you want to learn the basics, just head on over to the video over there. First of all, we're going to cover one of the most important new things of the update is it adds more demons. It adds two new greater demons that you can summon. One is this lovely fellow here, Leonard. And the other is this lovely uh, goat woman man thing um, known as Bathomant. Now the ones, demons, the most horrible demons, you currently can't summon. So you can't summon Heron, Lord of the Hunt. You can't summon Lilith, Vampire Lady. Um, and you cannot summon Cybercat555. Although he is the most powerful and evilest of all demons. And just an all around fun guy who is uh, very kind and won't do anything cruel. So. First things first, we're going to go and cover uh, travel. One of the simple things from last time that actually works now. Waystones. Covered them last time how to make them, but now they actually work. So, all you have to do with the waystone is slap it down, and then right click on it to start the ritual, and then you just run in the direction that you want to travel, and boom, you're sent there. And it's all grand and great. And then, if you want to go back, take out the waystone, slap it down, start the ritual again, and the waystone will go to where you want it to go. So, there's a, like a, there's this sort of sweet spot window where you have to run into the circle. There we go. Now, it doesn't always have to be to another circle. That's just what I was using, for example. You can just take another waystone, if you like. And you can take yourself all the way over into these dark enchanted woods here, which are all horrible and spooky, let's say. And you're like, I want to teleport to the top of this tree. So you prime it up, you set right there. And then next time you want to go to that forest, when you're by your magic circle, you just head on back to your lovely little home here. Slap the waystone down. Start the ritual and hop into the portal in the direction that it is facing. And boom, you teleport there. But I bet you're wondering, oh, how do you know how to do these rituals, Lorthorn? How are you so intelligent and clever figuring this out on your own? Well, I didn't. I used the wonderful guidebook provided by the mod, which has all the necessary information in it besides the stuff it doesn't, but we'll ignore that for now. So yes, you open up your Book of Shadows, which you can craft. And you should have J.I. in any case, and it's very simple craft has been covered before. Now you scroll all the way down to the bottom instead if you want to just cheat, and you can get it there. Now you open up this book, and there is rituals in it. There is some new rituals added, but we really don't care about those now, do we? Uh, so, the what teleportation though, this is you can use a waystone or a tag lock. So, if you have a tag lock of someone, ho 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 you can teleport your way over to them. That's pretty fancy. And then there's a few others that no one cares about, like the spiritual rift, which makes a temporary tear in the veil, allowing beings of the spirit nature to walk on Earth once more, only works at night, no one cares. And then there's a few others, like world manipulation, wherein you can make it sunny, you can make it moony, you can make it timey, you can make it deluge so you can like make it rain and stuff, sun, all that lovely stuff. And then you can conjure, which you, perception makes entities glow. No one cares about that. Coolest one is revealing. You can make a magic light lantern, 
Rising Twig's also pretty nifty. So, what else has changed? What is new? What do you need to know? Well, there is a new kind of tree out there. Very lovely tree. This tree is a dragon blood sapling. You slap this sucker down, you get some bone meal out there. Oh, some good old bone meal. Not spelled with that many O's, let me tell you that. And you grab your bone meal, um, and you slap it onto that thing, and you continue slapping it, and boom! You get this weird shaped tree. This tree has replaced the old Chungus tree. Can't even remember his name, it's so unrememberable. Now what can you do with this tree? Well, you notice this one's covered in cuts, and it's vomiting out these lovely little chunky blood things. So you take yourself a boo line. This item that no one uses. It is a part of the mod though. It has a recipe, emeralds, or any sort of gemstone with silver. Can be used to harvest plants. But you get out this lovely little boo line. And you walk up to the tree and you go, ha ha, and you slash it. And you can slash it all up. Every once in a while, the tree will vomit out this dragon blood resin. Very important stuff, useful later. We'll cover that. Now then, the formula for the powering of the altar has been revealed. So the altar power has four different kinds of thing you can place on that are useful. Once you've placed the best kind on, there's no point putting copies on. So there are swords, which are an anthem, which is this thing. Anthem's the best one to use. So you can slap that on and it'll increase the power. Then there is another category. I can't remember what the category itself is. I think it's... Um, I can't remember. Anyways, the best thing from this category... Oh yes, the gems category and all that good folly rot. Probably. But anyways, the best thing from that category is the filled goblet. It will offer the most power. Then skulls, you can slap any sort of head or skull on. I have a little wither skull here. And so there's a skulls organics category. And then finally, there is the uh, candlestick chandelier, all that stuff, good category. And the best one for here is the end rod, although candles do work as well. Our those do not provide much power. They'll add multipliers, and they'll definitely give it a boost. But what you truly need is plants. Lots and lots and lots of plants. Variety is better than many of the same kind. So as you can see, there's tons of variety here. Um, some that spreads, we got these lovely little candle plants, flame plants, some flowers, we got smash moss. We got every single kind of tree and some that don't come from the mod packs. These are from baubles, which we just have, or whatever it's called, not baubles, quirks. These are from quirks, these trees, but anyways, any kind of tree, any kind of plant, as long as it's modded or not, just as long as it has the plant tag, works for the old altar, and it'll give you some power. Now the most power you'll need is probably 2,000. I may be wrong, but if you need more, just add more variety, more trees. Get a mod that gives you tons of variety, like Botania. Botania is a brilliant mod. It will offer you tons and tons and tons of various different plants and power and all that good stuff you need. So now that you know how to power your altar, let's move on to another exciting feature, which is the gear. We have new kinds of gear. New kinds of which gear? The old kinds of metal gear I never covered. But yes, we've got new kinds of gear. So there is the boring old witch's robes. However, they've got some new modeling stuff added to them. They got the creepy cowly hood. Now to make this all nice and proper, we're going to go to my skin settings. We're going to turn off everything. And then you're going to be truly terrified by my model. He gads. They're so dull and boring. What happened to them? Well, ignore that. Anyways, uh, we are going to put on, and bam, we got spooky, scary, call to see Roby Dopes, which are nice and lovely, make you look like a proper witch in a cult. If you don't like the hooded cowl aspect, you can, of course, always go for the witch's hat, which is the regular old boring rigmarole. But if it's your thing, then it's your thing. But yes, you got the nice, lovely skirts, you got everything going for you. And now the hat no longer causes the weird thing to occur, which it gives you that sort of weird outline to your clothing that you're always wearing a cover on top. So there is that now. But there is more. There is always more. There is new kinds of robes. So if you're like, huh, I don't want to be a basic boring witch, then you can be an alchemical witch. You get your alchemical gear. It's all nice and alchemy-ish. If you don't like the alchemy hat, you can go for the cowl. It comes in both styles. It's very lovely. From the back, you can see it's got that nice little hoodie knobbly thing coming off it. But it's a very nice outfit, good for all weathers. 
If you're feeling a little more like you're in tune with nature instead of alchemy and you want to be a fairy pants and some sort of dryad freak, you can go and wear the naturey clothing, which is all magical and fairy-like and helps you with plants and stuff, and we'll cover that later. Right now we're just doing a fashion show. So yes, it's very lovely. From the back you can see there's a giant book in the way covering any details. That is from a different mod. Uh, there we go. From the back you can see it's very nice, very nice. Nice, pretty outfit. But if you want to wear the true winner's choice of an outfit, then you want the besmirched stuff. It is lovely. It is evil. It is demonic. It helps you trade with demons. It's got a nice flow to it. It's got a nice color scheme to it. Look at it from the back. There's no patterns on it. It's got little flames around. It is the best gear ever. It is the best outfit. You should definitely wear it. It only requires human blood to make. Wait, what? Don't mind that. You can use certificates. That works as well. Or other players if you're playing multiplayer. It is the best gear you can wear. All right, now what does all this stuff do for you? Well, if we go and look in the book, we can slowly flip over to gear and we can see various different witches' robes. Oh my goodness. Let's cover the first one we talked about, the witches' robe. What do the witches' robes do? Witches' robes are perfect clothing for practicing witchcraft. While rather mundane on their own, these robes can be modified to be all special and witchy pooey. However, if you feel like spicing up, you can get the alchemist attire. By using witches' stitches and um, stitched silver wool, impregnates the elements, fumes, and normal robes, increasing the wearer's proficiency with brews. Extra brews and cauldrons, both boosting their own brews and decreasing the effects from potions afflicted upon the wearer. So, if you're into potions and bubble bubble toil and trouble, get yourself a set of lovely alchemist wear. If you want to go naturey, you can get the green witch's robes. Created by carefully sewing blue wool and living plants to the traditional robes using pure flagellants, it imbues the robes with a life-boosting wear when in nature, and allowing them to better sympathize with spirits of nature, granting knowledge of plants, and being able to increase crop yields. So this stuff will make you more planty. Now, how do you craft these things, you're asking? Well, I will tell you, ignore these things. We'll talk about them later. So how do you craft these things? Well, it is a very simple process. You must go over to your friendly spinning wheel. Now, the spinning wheel itself will require you to make all sorts of lovely magical thread, such as Witch's City, which requires liquid witchcraft and string, but we've covered that before. How are to craft the new robes, what you must do as you take yourself an ordinary witch's gear, which we have here, and you take the required ingredients. Instead of using a crafting table, you slap them into the sewing wheel. And the sewing wheel start working. There's no animations for it as of yet, but that will probably be changed in the future. And it will start spinning away, and bam, it will make you the new gear, which is lovely. So that is how you get yourself witch's gear. Now, string, though, has more uses than just witch's gear. Oh, yes, indeed. It can make all sorts of new and exciting things. And it finally, after long waiting, has come out with the most demonic and evil of things. The poppets. Look at all of them. There are so many different types of poppets. They are so lovely, so brilliant, so simple, and yet complex. Everyone loves themselves some poppets. How do you make yourself a puppet? Well, to make yourself a puppet, you have to get yourself some Spanish moss. Spanish moss can be found in swamps. There's no swamps around, so I can't show that off. But besides that, you need to get yourself some living spirit string. That requires you to get golden thread. Oh my goodness. So you have to spin literally straw into gold, which is a lovely thing to do. And then, of course, you need some witch's stuff. Ectoplasm, easily gotten. You can figure that out for yourself. Spanish moss, you just need to find it. And then... You need a little bone me needle right over here. How do you get this thing? Well, you just use flint and some bone. Very simple if you have just enough items to figure this out. And then, from there, you can get poppets. Now, first of all, you'll get the most basic of poppets, which is the lovely poppet. It does nothing. It's garbage. It's trash. No one likes it. No one cares about it. However, from, with this thing, you can do all sorts of lovely mischief and shenanigans as long as as you have yourself taglock kits. So the taglock kit is very simple to make. It requires a glass bottle and a bone meal. Now the taglock kit can be used in various different forms. First thing you can do with it is you can take yourself, I believe a villager, yes, and you can creep up on him and bam, you got a taglock kit containing the soul of a villager. 
However, if you're feeling a little bit spicy, you can go up to a player or their bed, it doesn't need to be them, and you can tag lock kit their bed. You can tag lock kit their bed, and then boom, this contains a tag of Lorethorn. So what can be done with these things? Well, if you t go back over to your poppet shelf, and you go, all right, what kind of poppet do I want today? I think I want to get myself a poppet of protection. So we'll take the armor poppet. What does the armor poppet do, you may be asking? Well, take out the good old Book of Shadows, flip over to the poppets, and armor poppet prevents armor items from breaking. Instead, the poppet breaks. But it's like, how does this thing work? How can I make it protect me? Well, you simply take the tag lock kit, put it in your offhand, and you right click with the poppet in your hand and then it gets bound to you. Any armor you wear will be protected. But let's go through the poppets. So there's the boring poppet of armor protection. Tells you how to make it can be screaming and craft deal. Tool poppet, same idea. It's less of a work in progress than that armor poppet. The binding poppet slows those who attack you. Isn't that interesting? So you can protect yourself with it better. Poppet clumps this. The target has a chance to make their attackers drop their weapons. So if someone attacks you, they get butterfingers. Oh, death protection poppet protects you from death just once. We don't die. Instead, it just breaks and we're very weak for a while. So as you can see, they are quite perfective. Perfective, effective in protecting you. Now, other poppets do include one that just reduces falling damage, probably would be more useful than saving your life. One that stops fire. One that protects you from drowning for a short while. Ooh, fun. One that refuses starvation damage and feeds the user a little bit. And lower damage from vampires and werewolves. Ooh, exciting. I bet there's vampires and werewolves in the game because of this showing up. And then over here we have the spirit protection and protects you from ghosts and black hounds. Then a vampire puppet. Ooh, more vampire stuff. What's this all about? Oh, it just rejects, rejects damage you take to whoever it's bound to. Must be carried in the inventory. Meh. Then we have the voodoo protection puppet. It protects you from voodoo puppets and vampire puppets. And then we have the puppet of wasting. Induces hunger in whoever attacks the owner. But finally we have the voodoo puppet. Bound to a target. Right click with bone needles in your inventory and it'll deal little damage to the said target. That is all. It cannot be used to light them on fire or anything else fun or remotely interesting. You can't push people about, but they are probably going to add those in the future. If not, I will be sad. But as you can see here, we got ourselves a lovely photo of Poppet of ourselves. We got ourselves a needle here. And as you can see, you just right click with a bone needle in your inventory and starts killing the person. It's quite a brutal thing. All right, so that's the Voodoo Puppets done for you. And you can store them on shelves, and they'll still be active on the shelves, except for the ones that require them to be in your inventory, like the Vampire Puppet Shelf, I believe. Whew! Next thing's next. The Brazier's a lovely new addition to the game. Now, what the heck are these things? Well, the Brazier's are a lovely new, brave new addition to the game. How do you make a Brazier? Well, if you go to the Book of Shadows yet again, and you go to Devices, Click on the braziers, this is how they're crafted. It requires iron, silver, otherworldly tears, and nuggets. We have that over here on this nice, lovely little display. And you can get yourself a brazier. Now what's the brazier for? Well, the brazier is for giving you special magical effects. And it creates smoke. So you can get yourself some vitality, some deafness, invigoration, cat's eye, ooh, fullness. And also you can use braziers to empower braziers. So they basically give you potions effects without the potions. Now to do this, you will require the said ingredients. One of those such ingredients is these flowers, salt, potatoes, and elderberry. However, we don't want to do that one because it's boring. And we're going to throw those away and we're going to take the one on top of it. However, all things in the brazier require dragon blood resin and of course you need to be able to light the braziers on fire so we will get ourselves a simple flint and tindy the flint and tinder is definitely required part so you go over to your brazier and you slap everything you want into it so this one will make us quicker and you light on fire and it starts puffing out smoke and you're like oh joy it's puffy out smoke wait why aren't the effects happening did I do something wrong? What's going on? Well, yes, you are doing something wrong, because if you read the damn instructions, you will find out that you need to go to sleep. 
while this is all going on. So you sleep next to your brazier, taking those nice incense and fumes. Breathe them in, and then bam! You've got yourself a little bit of speed, a little bit of hoppiness, and it will last for 10 minutes, which is a decent amount of time. You can improve the effects and all that stuff with the braziers. But that is not the only things braziers could do. However, we are not going to cover them in this current moment. Well, that's the end of that video. I hope you enjoyed. I will be sure to catch you all in the next one. So stick around and it will be out sometime. Goodbye.